Welcome. I'm Pastor Michael Jarbo, Senior Associate Pastor here at Memorial Drive United Methodist Church. Over the last few months, I have heard more and more questions about the state of MDUMC and what it means to be involved in the life of the church. Questions like, did we meet last year's budget? Where do our mission dollars go? What does it mean to be a disciple? And is there really a place for me here at MDUMC? First and foremost, yes. Yes, yes, yes. There is a place for you here at MDUMC. Our mission is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. When you attend worship or a program here, you're invited to get involved and take your next step to join our church family, and to make an authentic difference in the world. We have so many opportunities to follow Jesus' footsteps and be a disciple. We encourage each of you to learn, live, give, and serve in whatever capacity you are able. Keep watching today's MDUMC Matters to learn more about what MDUMC is doing, how you can get involved, and why you matter. I am Jennifer Blaine, Chair of the Church Council, and I am delighted to introduce you to MDUMC Matters. You may be wondering why the name change. Well, in these changing times, MDUMC staff have begun to envision a new way to broadcast the good news of what God is doing in and through MDUMC. This church has long strived for a means to communicate the broad vision of what God is doing at MDUMC with the people of MDUMC. MDUMC Matters features what God breathes work is taking place here and reminds us that what we do as a church matters. Our first feature highlights how the body of Christ works together for wholeness, healing, and growth. In 2009, we hit the streets in Houston trying to help our veterans. The statistic at the time was one out of every three adult homeless persons was a military veteran. And, you know, obviously we were still in the middle of what was going on in Iraq and Afghanistan at the time. So we knew something had to happen. We were also starting to begin to see the suicide rates go up. Uh, so we wanted to do whatever we could to help. And as we were helping those veterans, trying to help them with their PTSD, we realized very quickly we had to help them with whatever the immediate stressor was and many times that was housing in some way shape or form and so that's when we started working on the concept of Camp Hope. We had no idea exactly what that would look like or what it's become today but it has certainly uh, transformed from a very rudimentary uh, location uh, here on the north side of Houston back in 2012 when we first opened the doors and we had six guys come in and to the place where we now have a hundred plus veterans here every single day in a program that's all day, every day, and a very intensive, very complex, but it's because of the great community we have here. Unfortunately, the first time I personally stepped on the campus of Memorial Drive uh, was for the funeral service of the young Marine that grew up in your church. And I'll never forget it. Uh, it's just one of those moments that's in indelibly etched into your brain. But I've known the family through the years and through that, we became very well acquainted with a number of folks within the church. Many different parts of the church, ministries of the church, stepped up and said, how can we help? And it's, to me, it's still even a legacy to not only Clay, but to all those that we've lost. Those who were lost in combat, and the multiplied numbers of that that we've lost, unfortunately, since coming home. And I can assure you, many times, uh, guys come in here, they're very angry. They're not only angry with God, they're angry with everything and everyone in the world. When they come in here and they look around and say, who are these people? It's a group from a church that's just down the road from here, Memorial Drive Methodist Church. Like, why are they here? Because they want to help you. And this is what they can do to help. So they begin to see, hey, somebody, it's not just a brochure. It's not just a PSA on, hey, we love veterans and blah, blah, blah. They're out here cooking a meal, pulling weeds, painting a fence. Why? They just want to help. They want to do what they can do to be the hands and feet of Jesus. So our program is a peer-to-peer -peer program. That's one vet who's been through the program, turn around helping the next vet come through. And there's a 
great power in that. Someone who actually understands. I sat where you sat. I also attempted suicide. I also had addiction. But here I am on the other side of the table, and I'm here to help you realize you can do it too. So there's the peer-to-peer -peer aspect. There's the faith-based aspect. But we also have licensed counselors on our campus, and everyone in our program sees counselors each and every week. So we're dealing with every aspect of their life the mental health part, the, uh, the emotional side of things, and the psychological side of things, uh, the uh, spiritual side of things. So we deal with the whole person. They are breaking bread together. They are praying together. They are crying together. Someone comes into the program that's been living out in the woods, like, what do you need? Here's some shoes, here's a toothbrush. Whatever they need, I got it, it's yours. This is a lifelong journey. We wanna set you up for lifelong, purposeful success. And uh, as guys progress through that, many, many times they will tell you one of the greatest things that happened to them while they were here is reconnecting with their faith. And it, you cannot overemphasize that. You can't force it. It's just a question, what changed for you? And that's the top of mind for them. I got my faith back. I'm continually amazed by all the good things my church, your church, our church is doing by God's grace. As scripture tells us, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Each one of us is beloved by our creator. God knows us, every hair on our head. And it is beautiful to see how MDUMC becomes the feet of God, walking into the community and sharing God's heart of love. MDUMC also uses its hands to bestow blessings in the community as seen in this next feature. Common Thread was started in about mid-90s. A friend and I, we found that we had a common interest in sewing and making things. We talked to all the volunteer departments at the major hospitals here in town, and we arranged with them to go like on a monthly basis or whatever they need, a weekly basis, and we find out they want hearts, they want critters. We take as many bags as our cars will let us take and we deliver them to those volunteers and we're just so happy because it brings such a even to the volunteers it brings such a smile on their face because they're going to deliver them to patients that they know are in need and it's just it's a great feeling to drop those off and know that you're doing some good our mission is outreach and to provide comfort and hope to uh, people who are undergoing either a health crisis or some other crisis and where they're needing, needing things. We are able to take those items as a volunteer and go and visit patients and ask the patient, could I offer you a comfort item, an item that hopefully is going to impact in a positive way your experience? And they do that. Oh, it is such a special thing, it's a gift. We received an email. It was an email from our cardiac unit. This gentleman reached back out after discharge. We're expecting to hear glorious reviews. We did great, the team did great. I'm discharged, I'm happy. But here's what I actually wanna tell you. I still have my heart-shaped pillow and I have my heart-shaped pillow with fabric of a cat. That pillow let me remember what I'm gonna come home to and it was my cat. And the gentleman could not have been more expressive of thanks and gratitude. And to know that Volunteer Services was able to play a part in that through our extraordinary partners in the community, how special was that? During December, it was Advent time, and it was a really busy time, but we were told up at Houston Methodist, down the medical center, they were having a cool uh, event called the Blessing of the Gifts. And at the Blessing of the Gifts, um, we walked in and we were greeted warmly by our just smiling faces of our Common Thread ministry. And we had this beautiful service of blessing, these incredible gifts that Common Thread were able to put together. And they were gonna go from this room all across Houston Methodist to begin to share 
there with people in need and volunteers were going to take them. It was like a, just like a, a moment for me where I got to say like, these are our people doing incredible work, not just within the walls of what we call the church, but spreading and sharing God's gift that they have with so many others. It was like a highlight for my year to have one quick moment where we could just stop and give thanks for the gift that they were able to provide so many people. They won't know their names, they won't know their faces, but they just helped and shared Christ's love in that way. And what a gift Common Thread is to MDUMC and to the world. They embody community, and to see a group of people come together, and they're able to explore their talent and their time and get to do their craft, that's something that they could choose to keep. They don't have to do this. They don't have to donate these items, but they do. And these women, when they came to our Blessing of the Gifts this past December, it was an extraordinary day. They walked into the room knowing exactly what they were here to do. They knew the conversations that they were gonna be having. They were not afraid to go up to anyone in that room and introduce themselves and say, who are you? What do you do at Houston Methodist Hospital? And it was just a sea of wonderful people. I, I will always remember how friendly they were, how excited they were, but how thankful that they were to be present with us, and all I can say is we were so thankful for them. Well, I think all of us at, at points in preparation for this, I, I take the hearts that are cut and sew them at the sewing machine, and, and as I'm doing that, I'm thinking about who is going to be getting the item and, and you know thinking about how this will help them and comfort them. I hope they feel our love, and I hope they feel comfort and hope and peace. Being in the hospital or being sick is not fun. You're just sort of lost, so it's, uh, hopefully it brings them some comfort. And then they take that home with them and they always remember that we cared, that God loves them. Notice how God weaves us together for good in community and for the community. Every stitch is important, just like each one of us, and together we can make a difference. As we show up and we get involved, we are living out our calling as Christians to learn, live, give, and serve together. These next videos will highlight reports from church leadership. Know that you are a part of this work too. And as a member of the body of Christ, thank you for showing up and getting involved. Together, we are making a difference. Hello, my name is Joe Nelson, and I am serving as chairman of the Board of Trustees this year at MDUMC. While we get settled into 2024, there are first a couple of items from the trustees' workbench from the previous year that are worth celebrating. First, the campus-wide IT system upgrade, which began in the early summer of 2023, has been completed. Both church staff and guests are now able to enjoy higher speed wireless internet access on campus, as well as improved phone stability. As icing on the cake, Dr. Morgan no longer needs to step outside of his office to send an email from his laptop. Second, the trustees were able to execute the purchase of a new chiller on the main campus. This equipment will replace a crucial component of the campus's HVAC system that has been years overdue and is expected to be installed just in time to continue keeping the main campus cool during the peak months of this next summer. Looking ahead on the current year, the Board of Trustees will be pursuing short-term lease extensions with two of our smaller retail tenants on our West Campus, which will provide the church with added flexibility as it plans for future use of those spaces while maintaining the benefit of the rental revenue on our cash flow. We are waiting on city permitting before construction can begin on a new curbside monument sign over at the Journey, which we expect to occur this year and which we can all be excited about. Meanwhile, we continue to monitor for upkeep items on the main campus, such as the refinishing of the sanctuary exterior doors to ensure that all of our worship spaces remain in an inviting condition. This year, the trustees will work closely with our church leadership to take a close look at what improvements can be made to the security of our physical spaces, specifically as it relates to our weekday school facilities. Stay tuned for continued updates. If you have any questions about any of these updates or have any suggestions as to how to keep our church's facilities thriving, please don't hesitate to contact myself or any other members of our MDUMC Board of Trustees. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Jeremy Garner, Chair of the MDUMC Finance Committee. With the new year upon us and spring quickly approaching, I'd like to give you an update on our budget for 2024, your generosity, and the next steps we'd like each member of our church to consider. Our budget for 2024 is $5.98 million, which will cover the costs of our facilities, outreach, discipleship, charitable grants, staff, educational programs, youth programs, adult programs, caring ministries, and so much more. This budget is largely in line with the contributions our church received in 2023, and our goal is to operate with a balanced budget. That said, if we can raise more, we can do more. In December, we ask every member of our church to consider making a meaningful gift to MDUMC. And I'm pleased to report that since then, we had 150 members give for the first time. And no, I'm not rounding. The numbers just worked out that way. To those families and those we've come to rely upon who give regularly, I want to extend a heartfelt thank you. You are making a difference for our church, our community, and beyond. To those who have not historically given to the church, I ask you to please consider doing so in 2024. It takes all of us together for the church to meet its goals, and every gift matters. We recognize everyone's situation is different, and the church is here for you regardless of your financial position or history of giving. We simply ask that every member of our church give strong consideration to making a gift this month. When doing so, please think about the positive impact the church has had on you, your family, and our community. Think about how much you give to MDUMC each year, and then think about how much you spend at Starbucks, on baseball lessons, on rounds of golf, or on Stanley Cups and Stanley Cup accessories. I ask that you please think about where the church fits into your life and consider giving accordingly. Giving is a key pillar that makes this church such a special place. Our collective generosity enables us to share the grace of God, support our neighbors, and make the world a better place. With your help, we can continue to do great things. Thank you. God is leading this church into uncharted territory, and I couldn't be more excited. I see our church truly living out its mission to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. There are so many things happening in the life of this church that truly matter, but that doesn't mean we can stop right there. I was reminded recently that as committed disciples, we are not called to be church consumers, but spiritual contributors. Contribute, that's a very important verb. We must show up and get involved to actually make a difference. And I have seen how MDUMC is the body of Christ through connections with Camp Hope and Common Thread here today. I hope you have as well. But there are so many more opportunities for us to live out our discipleship calling. First, I want to tell you about what's coming up on April 6th and 7th. There are even more options to serve here by contributing and participating at OGDAS, which stands for one great day or two of service. And there are many other ways that this church learns, lives, gives, and serves together. So show up, friends, get involved, and together we will make a difference. MDUMC matters. You matter. May it be so. Amen.